Okay, welcome aboard, everybody, on a uh, very quiet Wednesday morning. Okay, very quiet Wednesday morning. We will ask you the uh, simple question. Can everybody uh, hear? All right, there's the sound. There's the bell. The bell has begun, and bingo! There it is. Okay. <laughs> Good morning uh, on a Wednesday, and we're all excited uh everybody's excited thank you unholy toledo we're all excited to hear uh all the prospects all the big names coming up uh we have already seen uh we have seen uh, nikki lopez we have seen michael chavis we have seen nick senzel uh we have just seen carter kiboom Kai Boom, Koo Boom, Corbin Martin, Griffin Canning, uh, uh, Vlad, of course, who just hit the two home runs. We've seen Keston Hiura called up yesterday, and now we see Austin Riley get called up. <coughs> He'll be up today, and uh, we're all excited to see Austin Riley with uh, the possibility, and it's a good possibility, of Ender Enciarte uh, being uh, put on the uh, injured list. So we'll see how that works out. Good morning to Jeremy Bass. Riley Day has arrived, and uh, so has Arnie. Okay, Arnie is here, the great beer man. Greg is here. Cam, DK Loosh, the uh, DVD. Jay Bass, that guy, Trader Jim, Unholy Toledo, as uh, people filling in a little late today, but nonetheless filling in. Okay, good morning to you. The Arizona Diamondbacks, they're struggling offense. All right, uh, uh, another loss. They have lost four out of five. They have lost seven out of ten. And that's a stretch that has cost them three and a half games in the standings to the Dodgers, who now have taken the National League West lead by four and a half games. How about that one? Okay, four and a half games. Good morning to the beach bum. Uh, The past few, now Jake Lamb is coming back, but for all of you who have Jake Lamb, just let me point out, uh, the progress that he's made uh, has been called awesome, okay? Uh, He had an injured left quad. Uh, he is much closer to beginning rehab, which brings him much closer to the return uh, to the Diamondbacks roster in about a week or so. Uh, so now what that means is that Tori Lovello is going to have to do some all-out juggling with his infield, okay? A lot of juggling by Tori Lovello. And here's what I mean. Uh, Christian Walker has emerged as a uh, top first baseman. Uh, among the five most productive first basemen in the majors, Eduardo Escobar is among the top ten third basemen in the majors. Second baseman Wilmer Flores, after a slow start, uh, he's batting about 280 now. All right, so for Lamb to play one of those three positions, somebody's going to have to sit. And Lavello does not anticipate this being a problem. How could it not be a problem? If, her, if Lamb is at first, it would mean fewer at-bats for Walker. If he was at third, it would mean fewer at-bats for either Escobar or Flores. Uh, who could uh, Flores could sit with Escobar moving to second, and it might mean fewer games at second base for Cattell Marte, who has also played well defensively in center field. So uh, there you go. Some juggling coming on. Good morning to Phil. Phil Chaplin here in the chat room. Nice to see you, Philly. Okay. So uh, some moving and grooving with uh, Jake Lamb coming up, okay? So we'll see what happens. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit more, as much as it's hard to believe, uh, it'll be, it'll be a, almost a three-man platoon between Lamb, Walker, and Escobar. How about that? The Atlanta Braves, as I mentioned before, are going to promote top prospect Austin Riley. Uh, this was confirmed by the Atlanta Constitution. Uh, Ender Enciarte came out of Tuesday's game with lower back tightness and likely will require a stint on the injured list, and that will open the door to um, uh, Riley coming up. Uh, So he is the consensus top position prospect on this Atlanta team. He has started four of the past uh, uh, six games in left field for AAA Gwinnett, and he's... uh, 
He will land that spot. Ronald Acuna will shift to left in the absence of Ender Enciarte. That's what it seems to be. Now, on the downside for the Braves is uh, Mike Fultonewich. Velocity slightly down. His location is still a problem. His slider has been the uh, has been the big problem here, and was his, uh, very much uh, his Achilles heel against the Cardinals. He is not getting swings and misses with the fastball. He only has two in 48 throws of that fastball, and that was a strength that helped him strike. He struck out over 200 hitters last year. Okay. Over 200 innings, over 200 hitters last year. And this year, he has given up, in 21 innings, Mike fulton has given up eight home runs. And that's not good, okay? So uh, there you go. Eight home runs in 21 innings. Through four starts, he's allowed 19 earned runs across 21 in the third inning. He owns a 14 to 8 strikeout to walk ratio, and like we said, he's given up eight home runs. His next start would be Sunday against the Brewers, and uh, maybe he'll take a break, okay? Uh, maybe. We'll see if they'll skip him. The Braves are going to start Mike Soraka today, hoping again to surpass the 500 mark, and the Cardinals, meanwhile, have won nine out of their last 10 games in Atlanta. Nine out of ten games in Atlanta. Good morning to Lou. Good to have you aboard, Louie. And good morning to Dr. Z. Can't do a podcast without Zelmo. That's for sure, okay? Uh, now, in St. Louis, Colton Wong hit uh, a, a three-run homer in the ninth as the Cardinals really knocked out Atlanta 14-3 to at uh, SunTrust Field. Flaherty. Pitch for the Cardinals. He had no hit ball for four innings. And then three soft hits by the Braves. And it, it really was not a bad outing for Flaherty. Three soft hits by the Braves led to three runs in the fifth inning. But he did walk a season-high five. And he struck out six over six innings. And here's this. He threw 109 pitches. But he did get win number four. So Flaherty, not at his best, but still manages to get a win because of the offensive support. And now, as we said, Fulte has given up 28 earned runs to the Cardinals in 25 innings, okay? And 27 of the runs came in Atlanta, as opposed to only one run in his two starts in St. Louis. How about that? So, uh, Fulte knew it's not doing well at home, as a lot of the Atlanta starters. Methical has joined us. Good morning to the Methical. Nice to have you aboard, Methical. Okay, there you go, uh, Mr. Leonard. Fultonowicz, of course, went on the injured list. He had a right elbow burn spur. That was in spring training. So um, eight runs, three homers in the first five innings. Molina was the guy that knocked Fultonowicz out of the game with a three-run homer. And that was a number 150 for Yadier Molina. And is he a Hall of Famer? Is Yadier Molina a Hall of Famer? Marcel Azuna has been 4 for 20 with 9 strikeouts against uh, Fulton Uwitz before Tuesday night. But this is why you can't really go hitter against pitcher. Ozuna inhaled. A, he had a hanging slider, and he knocked it over the left field wall, and that gave the Cardinals a 3 to nothing lead in the first inning. And although the Cardinals had lost 9 of their past 11 games, uh, manager Mike, what's his name, Schild? Uh, he stayed with his regular lineup against the Braves, okay? Uh, he, but center fielder Harrison Bader has been cleared for full-time duty after he had some neck stiffness, and that followed an injury list stay and a strained hamstring. Uh, a player doesn't lose his job, okay? That's what they say. But the two outfielders that are playing ahead of him, Jose Martinez is hitting 339, and Dexter Fowler is hitting at 294. Hard to hard for uh, maybe hard for Harrison Bader to get that full time job back. Kevin Hastings has joined us in the studio, as has White Sox Al. Great to have you aboard, everybody. And for those of you listening for the first time, and it's interesting, I put a post up uh, on Facebook asking people very simply, why haven't you listened to this podcast? 
I know it's a, kind of a weird thing to ask, but uh, I, I and I found because of the answers, people were nice enough to tell me what podcast. As much as I promote it on Facebook and it's on iTunes and stuff, uh, people just uh, still are not even aware. I've done this for twenty for let's say the podcast for a good part of eighteen years, and people don't know I, have, I do a podcast. Something's wrong with my promoting or something like that. It's hard. They still think it's the serious show. A lot of people get this podcast confused with serious. Has nothing to do with it, okay? So uh, we broadcast every day, 9 a.m. Eastern Time every morning. Uh, it's about 45 minutes. You can listen on iTunes. You can listen on uh, Spreaker. Or you can come to the website, go where it says podcasts, and uh, you can hit it up there, or you can hit it up on my Facebook page. So uh, we'll see what happens. We talk about Jake Lamb not getting back in the lineup. Uh, Harrison Bader may not have such an easy time to get back into the lineup. So if you have Harrison Bader and you know somebody who wants him because of the stolen bases, now's the time to market Harrison Bader. Good morning to the Amazons. For the Chicago Cubs... Unbelievable. There's a time this year where people wondered if right-hander Kyle Hendricks could could turn it around. He had his usual April uh, slow start, okay? And uh, I'll tell you, the Cubs, 23 uh, wins in the last 30 games, okay? And he delivered. He got as many hits as he allowed. So how about that for Hendricks? He outscored the Cincinnati Reds by himself. His first hit was a two-out, two-run double over a very shallow playing outfield. And how about that one? So, uh, pretty good, right? And uh, he also improved to 2-0 and with an ERA of 0-3-6 in three starts this month after a very rough April. So, Hendricks retired the first 10 that he faced, lowered his career ERA in May. He's a May pitcher to 2-5-1. And he said, it's, you know, it's look, it's it's a mindset. He did, he has improved command, and that became five, really started five starts ago. But still, it's all about Donkey Oki. Good morning. Good morning to Easy Kill. And ladies and gentlemen, back from vacation on his 15th honeymoon, I believe, or was, I don't know, if that's, is that right? Is the fan addict. And sure enough, he spends his honeymoon here in the chat room. That's great to see. Mr. Fan Addict, of course, one of my dear friends. I love him, and uh, nice to see you in the chat room, okay? Uh, by the way, Brandon Morrow, who uh, had a setback last month, is going to be evaluated in the next few days. Uh, the up, the eye is towards the uh, restarting the throwing program, and let's see who this is, okay? Let's see who it is, and uh, good morning. You're on the air. Good old Scotty Engel. I'm doing a podcast, so I always, uh, when I hear, I see your name, I answer. Can I call you back in about 45 minutes? Thank you, Scott Engel. Everybody, how about that? <laughs> One of my dear friends in the industry, Scotty Engel, who's been around for so many number of years and uh, having a having a tough time now, but Scotty will bounce back. So anyway, the uh, the Cubs are hoping that Brandon Morrow. Um, returns in July. By the way, I was expecting a call, but not from Scott, okay? Uh, yeah, so Scott Engel, uh, that, that's what I love. I love the people who are my dear friends who don't know that for the past 18 years I've been doing a podcast from 9 to 10. How about You got to love them, though. I mean, you got to love them, and that's typical Scott. Now, the Dodgers, this is crazy. Clayton Kershaw against, uh, what's his name, uh, Chris Paddock. And I do say what's his name very affect, uh, affectionately, right? What's his name? All right, here's his name. Clayton Kershaw, you're not going to believe this. Listen to this. Against San Diego, he is 11-0. and And the team, the Dodgers, 16-0 and against San Diego when Clayton Kershaw takes the mound. How about that one? And the way they got to Paddock last night, now let's see what happens. Let's see if Major League Baseball, a known copycat league, follows the lead. The Dodgers entered the game with, as being the most disciplined team in the National League. They chase a league low of 26 pitches uh, outside the zone, and they see a league high of four pitches 
pl- for plate uh, a per plate appearance. Now, the pitching matchup was billed as a duel between Kershaw and. P- 